Hey, what's up everyone? Alexander Lores here, uh, adjusting here for a second. Uh, it's Saturday, August 6th. It's been a while since we did a live update, so I uh, want to do a bit of a long review. A lot's been happening um, since our last report, and the July job report came out yesterday. Lots of things to talk about. Central African Republic, Brazil, the IRS uh, expansion, etc. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, the markets. Brief update, Bitcoin is uh, up by about 1% on the last 24 hours. And uh, we see it's uh, in the low 23,000s. ETH, 1,700 holding up 3% in the last 24 hours. BNB up 1.5%. Also, uh, US dollar coin, 54, million mark, uh, 54 billion dollar market cap, US Dollar tether, $66 billion market cap. The gap keeps shrinking as USDC seeks to, seeks to flip in USDT. Uh, other major cryptocurrencies last 24 hours. Decred is up 56%. Filecoin and Quant, 14%. Biggest gainers. Uh, Flow is down 3%. Near protocol, 2.5%. Theta network, just over 1%. Pretty much everything's in the green. Total market cap. For crypto, it's at 1.1 trillion, up about 1% in the last 24 hours. So let's take a look at what's going on with the July jobs report. This is one of the reports that's always been relevant to uh, crypto. Uh, not sure that it had a particularly relevant uh, reaction today uh, or yesterday. Um, okay, so first of all, employment situation July 2022, the broader situation. Uh, it was a good report, uh, lauded as excellent report, blockbuster shock, uh, better than expected. 528,000 jobs were added to the non-farm payroll employment report and unemployment uh, rate went down to 3.5%. So essentially that's all the jobs that were lost in COVID have finally been recovered. Great news, let's take a W on it in America, we did it. Um, though I'm actually gonna call BS on some of that and, and pull into some reasons why uh, not everything's all well. Uh, a couple things. First of all, this is a kind of report where it's good for the economy, bad for the markets. Why? The Federal Reserve or Fed has two basic jobs. One is to keep inflation down. Two is to keep the economy pumping. And the biggest figure they look at is the unemployment rate low. So uh, they continue to raise rates, which essentially pushes down asset prices, risk assets, such as stocks and Bitcoin. And... <clears throat> um, you, you know, uh, that is supposed to lower inflation. So um, inflation was 9.1% uh, in the uh, June report. So that uh, is a major concern to be resolved. So the good job support gives the Fed more reason to raise rates, continue uh, that action, which continues to pressure down markets, decrease liquidity in the markets. Essentially bad for the economy, uh, sorry, good for the economy, bad for markets in that kind of weird kind of situation. Okay, so <clears throat> now I wanna break down a few things. First of all, bullish in America, I love America, but it's been 30 months. This is an internally created recession by government lockdowns, or excuse me, internally created, yeah, uh, drop in the employment, right? So end of 2019, right before COVID, uh, finally we recovered. Uh, historic recovery, perhaps, if this was a situation created by Let's say BlackRock, the largest company in the world, largest asset manager, turning out to be a Ponzi scheme, eight trillion lost. Okay, I could see that could take some recovery. Um, let's say uh, you know half the banks in the U.S. went bankrupt, or there was an invasion, a war, or an earthquake destroyed half of California. These things might cause a longer-term recession. Um, the Fed pumping money out, uh, you know, the the lockdowns, Fed pumping money out, um, you know. Obviously, regardless of a view on COVID and, and whether the government's reaction to lockdowns are appropriate or not, fact is it's been 30 months, that's way too long. Uh, that's not good, period. Uh, okay, moving along. Um, some other figures in the jobs report, bit of red flags. Uh, I did tweet about this, so I'm just pulling that up right now. Um, okay, so first of all, breaking down a bit, uh, who benefited from the jobs report increase so for less than high school diploma, the unemployment rate went from 5.8% last month to actually 5.9%, went up a little bit. High school diploma uh, stayed the same at 3.6%. Some college or associate's degree 
Unemployment went from 3.1% to 2.8%, so that was the biggest gain. And then a bachelor's or higher uh, went from 2.1% to 2%. So the more educated sector of the populace, scooping up the jobs. Also, uh, some interesting factors. Um, the um, unemployment for uh, blacks went from 5.8% to 6%, actually got worse. And um, breaking down uh, some things by racial and gender uh, differences, white men, 20 and over, we're gonna cover all the 20 and older groups. Uh, white men, 20 and older, went from 3.1 to 3% unemployment, so slight improvement. White women, 20 and older, went 2.9% to 2.6%. Good jump there. Black men went from 5.3, uh, these are all 20 and older, 5.3%, 5.7%. Actually, unemployment increased 0.4%. Black women, 56 to 53 so that improved 0.3%. Latin men went up 34 to 3.5%. Latin women, 45 to 3.2%. So a lot of Latin women got jobs. Asians, overall, 29 to 2.6%. Um, looking at one other red flag, or actually two other figures of those uh, over 500,000 uh, jobs, uh, a good chunk, um, I don't know about a good chunk, but 57,000 uh, got jobs in the government, so the government increased by 57,000 jobs. Um, and uh, another red flag out of the uh, over 500,000 jobs added, uh, it is noted that uh, just getting the number, apologies for the delay here. So over, uh, I think it was 200,000 plus with 300,000, uh, pulling this up here. Uh, over 200,000 uh, moved to part-time from full-time citing uh, employment conditions. So that's a significant chunk. So there's definitely some red flags here. Um, Definitely incentivizes the Federal Reserve to raise rates. Good news on the jobs coming back, um, but we're looking at uh, 30 months to recovery to where the economy was. So the economy has essentially recovered back to where it was uh, two and a half years ago. So that's a bit too long to recover in my opinion, but that's the facts. Those are some numbers uh, breaking down the areas. Uh, in the next week, you'll see more in the inflation report, which Fingers crossed, it does look like it's gonna come down with the price of gasoline, crude oil, uh, under $90 a barrel. So that should finally be coming down from its uh, historic uh, jump, uh, essentially tripling in price uh, over the last year and a half, year or so, right? Uh, okay, so back to some other things in crypto. Um, why do I talk to these markets? It does affect Bitcoin. Traders do look at things. BTC didn't seem to be affected, kind of went up a little bit. Uh, yesterday, uh, U.S. stocks, part of the connection here, I look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. <clears throat> S&P 500 was down 0.1%, NASDAQ was down half a percent, and Dow was up 0.23%. So that again indicates kind of complex situation, the more riskier assets, all, while all stocks are considered risk assets, the NASDAQ is more tech heavy, uh, medical research companies, newer companies, uh, so that down half a percent, they're definitely considered a little more risky. Dow, some of the oldest, uh, most profitable companies that aren't necessarily innovating as much, uh, they're up 0.23%. So normally the Dow has more uh, pharmaceutical companies, construction companies, retail stores, et cetera. So the economy in the slowdown, the Dow generally outperforms the NASDAQ significantly. Okay, back to Bitcoin, crypto. Uh, one of the pieces of news Central African Republic, we've been following the story. Uh, several months ago, they declared Bitcoin legal tender. Uh, the president, Faustin Archange Tudera, uh, of the tiny, impoverished African nation, uh, did a tweet thread this morning, uh, mentioned, you know, reiterated Bitcoin uh, as legal tender. Also, they launched, a, they called the project the Sango Project, a cryptocurrency called Sango. And the president commented that the BEAC, B-E-A-C, uh, is urging the development of a common digital currency for all Central African states. The B-E-A-C is the Bank of Central African States. It's a central bank serving uh, 
they call the Economic and Monetary Community of Central Africa. So that's six member nations, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and the Republic of the Congo. <clears throat> um, so these are all kind of somewhat associated nations, extremely impoverished. Um, so he described the uh, Sango as a cryptocurrency backed by Bitcoin and it's a sovereign national digital currency. He <laughs> pointed to historic fact that uh, the Central African Republic is a rich country with lots of gold, diamonds, iron, lithium, uranium, and countless other minerals. Other parties have come to Central African Republic and taken the wealth. He's not interested in giving it away. He believes in tokenizing it uh, and backing it by Bitcoin. So unsure if this is a central bank digital currency, an ICO, or somewhere in between. Uh, but that was the tweet this morning and he refers to the Sango blockchain and the Sango project as his initiative. He also mentioned in the tweet thread, a, it's gonna be followed by a young initiative giving smartphones to youth, enabling them access to the internet, Bitcoin and Sango. Uh, this being a major barrier to adoption, the second nation to adopt Bitcoin's legal tender. The first, El Salvador had 70% of its uh, impoverished nation on the internet. So a much lower percentage in the Central African Republic. So we'll be following it. Uh, never a proponent of central bank digital currencies, except I do see personally uh, a use case in African nations that are currently, they're currently under the control of the, believe it or not, Bank of France, uh, Central African Republic and about 13 other uh, nations uh, literally send their wires through the Bank of France, which is a problem for them uh, for a number of reasons, won't get into that, but that's the news. Also, uh, looking at Brazil, um, I mentioned the story in the, the news video, but the uh, head of the central bank there, uh, or the central bank of Brazil director, uh, named uh, Araujo, Fabio Araujo, um, praised Bitcoin as a financial innovation that gives rise to Web3. Uh, talked about the digital real, their central bank digital currency that's under research, might have programmable features. So mixed feelings on that one, but Bitcoin getting attention. And of course, I would say the biggest news of this week, um, BlackRock, the largest investment manager of the world, they're a bit down like the rest of us, but they have somewhere around 8 trillion assets in their management uh, are adding Bitcoin, the ability to buy Bitcoin for their institutional clients and they're partners, partnering with Coinbase. So. Uh, Bitcoin definitely has the eyes of some of the top uh, investment managers in the world, and that's the largest. Uh, previously, uh, Larry Fink, the CEO, had called uh, essentially Bitcoin uh, a scam or Ponzi scheme. Then he had supported uh, blockchain, not Bitcoin, and now they're supporting Bitcoin, literally. So uh, that follows Fidelity, big news a few months ago. So some of the biggest news. Uh, I'm going to be turning this off. We're going to Twitter Spaces, Crypto Talk Radio, 1 p.m. every Saturday. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out thelatestblock.com. Also, you can subscribe to the free newsletter, thelatestblock.com forward slash subscribe. Again, thank you for listening if you're here and uh, please give this a share to your friends and subscribe. Have an awesome weekend. Bye.